What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today we're talking some college football prize picks. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. Helps us a ton, so thank you if you've done that. And prize picks, phenomenal offer for you. They have a first match deposit bonus up to $100, and that also gets you a free month of Stochastic Plus. So make sure to take advantage of that. Link in the video description below. You can use some of that $100 on these picks. We'll give you five today, and I'll, I'll talk about a few others I like in case you are expanding your cards, playing multiple lines, things like that. Also, if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, we're going to start with the quarterback position. There's one I really like here, and it is Hudson Card, the new quarterback for Purdue, under 276 yards. First and foremost, you look at the total in this game. It is not high, and we're talking 47 points, Purdue's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. So right away, game environment does not lend itself to scoring. Purdue is changing offenses. I don't think it's going to be a drastic change here, but you do lose Jeff Brom. That is notable here. You move to Graham Harrell, former West Virginia coordinator. He's been with USC. I think his attack is going to be balanced here, especially with Hudson Card. They already lost their top receiver, Jamal Idrin, to an injury this offseason. This team is really banged up, and they don't have any clear starters at the receiver position. Then Fresno on the other side is a team that's much weaker. So I think this is a team that probably leans on Devin Mockaby and the ground. So aside from game environment stuff, I think there's some context involved with Hudson Card that points us towards the under here. Next up, we will go to the running back position. There's a couple really interesting ones here and a few that I like. Honestly, some of them are big favorites, so I'll give you a couple, and I think you can choose between them if you if you would like. My first one is going to be Braylon Allen, over 90 and a half yards. I actually like Audric Estime over this number two. We'll talk about them both, but if I had to pick just one, I would pick Braylon. And I think you probably want to just play one of these guys because there is some blowout risk. Wisconsin's a 20... Eight point favorite. Notre Dame is going to be upwards of like a 40 point favorite against Tennessee State, according to my projections. But you just saw Notre Dame basically win by that much against Navy. His teammate cleared that number. He also fumbled it and didn't see a full workload in the game. So I think you could still rely on efficiency. I don't think he really needs the full workload to get to this number. But regardless, we'll use Braylon as the official play. The spread's closer in this game. You have Wisconsin minus 28 with new offense coming in, Phil Longo system. It's going to be some air raid concepts. I don't think year one they're going to go full air raid, especially with Braylon in this offensive line. Plus, Phil Longo's had two backs, Michael Carter and Javante Williams, before both 1,000-yard rushers in the same season. Braylon is not going to be running into as many eight-man boxes, which is amazing to hear. He will split some time with Ches Malusi. I'm not too worried about that. Over 90 and a half yards is a premier number for us. Next one. We'll go to South Carolina, where we have Dakirian Joyner, over 49 and a half rushing yards. This one I think is really interesting. North Carolina does not have a good defense anywhere across the board. And I think Dakirian Joyner is just flat out going to play over Juju McDowell. He was listed as the starter on the depth chart over Juju McDowell. And even if you just look at these guys size-wise, McDowell is about 175 pounds. Dakirian Joyner is a big, like, 6'2 running back. He's a player that can't actually handle a full workload here. The spread in the game is within three points. South Carolina, the slight underdog. Total in the game is shooting up around 64 points now, so points will be scored. 49 and a half rushing yards is a very generous number here. For Dak Joyner, we will take the over there. And I think that was it for the running props I liked. Maybe there was one more. I don't know. Anyway, there is a couple of receiving ones, so we'll go there next. First one up, I want to talk about... Miles Price, if we can find him. I think he's a little lower on this board. He's the Texas Tech receiver, over 38 and a half. Find it very interesting to see him and Jaron Bradley priced 20 yards apart. Jaron Bradley at 58 and a half yards, Price at 38 and a half. Price dealt with some injuries last year, but prior to that, he was the wide receiver one for this team. There's some fluidity to the offense. It's going to be this full air raid, four wide almost every single play. So you will have ebbs and flows to the receiving. But I think most of the time, these guys should be priced pretty similarly, not 20 yards apart. I know Wyoming, they're going to kind of slow the place, pace of the game down, run a lot, but their defense shouldn't offer much resistance despite being at home. 
And then Price and Jaron Bradley both should play a ton here. So 38 and a half over is the number I like. Last situation I want to talk about is this Tennessee receiving situation. On their depth chart, they listed Ramel Keaton as a clear starter. They listed Brew McCoy as a clear starter. And then they listed Squirrel White as a co-starter. He has the highest receiving prop here. Now, I don't want to go under. But what I want to say is you might see him just flat out split snaps 50-50. Whereas Brew McCoy is a clear starter on this offense, as is Ramel Keaton. I think you can take shots on both of these players. I would prefer Brew McCoy just because he's locked into the offense. But you do get a better price tag on Ramel Keaton. But regardless, I think this is a situation you want to play as well. Like all these props as well as the Esteem A1. So take advantage of these. If you do five, it's automatically a flex play. Five pays 10x. You get four right out of these five, 2x. And then three, you do get some money back. But if you play less than five, say you don't want to play the Brew McCoy, you get a chance to decide between the power play and the flex play. Power play, you need all of them correct to get 10x. Flex play gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Three correct, you can make. 1.5x, 4 correct, 5x. So a lot of cool ways to play around with prize picks. Make sure to check them out. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video, if you're with me or against me, or if you just like a different prop, I'd love to hear it. And we'll be back again next week talking some prize picks, college football. Until then, good luck, everyone. We'll see you next time.